On relapsing uh, MS, uh, as I mentioned, we uh, compared ourselves to an active comparator and we showed superiority on efficacy on all major markers of disease uh, activity. PPMS is a different thing because uh, even though there's been a lot of progress on relapsing uh, MS over the past decades, PPMS has no approved uh, therapies. And people have tried. There have been big phase three trials which have failed consistently. Ocrelizumab is the first uh, uh, medicine ever to have shown efficacy in PPMS. And this is a really major landmark because these patients right now have no available therapies. And even though this is a, let's say, a less common form of this disease, it's about 15% of overall uh, MS, it's a very debilitating uh, you know, disease. People lose function, become wheelchair bound. So in, in, you know, off being able to offer them now a medicine that actually prevents their progression significantly is, is really a breakthrough for them. In PPMS, what our, what our results show is that you reduce the progression by about 25%. Uh, percent. Uh, and, and that's a, you know, it's, 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 so it doesn't stop the disease com uh, completely, but it's a, it's a major step forward if you consider that up until now, nothing had worked. So it's, let's say, the first chapter of this new era where you can start to treat PPMS patients and believe that you're going to offer them clinical benefit. The reason why it works in PPMS and works so well in relapsing uh, MS as well, I think it has to, to do really with, um, with the fundamental role that B cells play in this disease. Uh, for the longest time, we focused the whole, the whole field is focused on T cells, on other aspects of the immune response. Um, but we do know that B cells are involved in, in a number of processes. Uh, not only do they activate and present antigens to T cells, but I think more importantly, they also take up residence in the CNS. So they make these lymph nodes in your brain, if you want. And these probably drive a lot of the progression that you, that you, that you see in relapsing and in primary pro pro progressive uh, MS as well. My belief is that by, you know, by targeting this other aspect of the immune system, you're starting to have effects which now, which up, up until now were just not possible. So progressive uh, MS has become a treatable you know, disease, which it, it really was not the case up until now. I think the, the, you know, the key take-home messages for, uh, for physicians thinking about uh, MS is that in relapsing patients, uh, ocrelizumab is, uh, offers the, the highest efficacy profile but with a really good safety profile. So it opens up the possibility of treating early your patients with something that works really, really well but also is, is safe. Right? And that's something new because we know the earliest you treat, the, the earliest you stop per the disease, the better the long-term outcome. So that's really important. For primary progressive patients, what physicians should know is that this is the, the first medicine ever to have shown efficacy. So it's really a landmark, it's something new, it's a new hope for these patients. Uh, the story of uh, MS therapy has been that in the beginning you develop medicines which are not very uh, efficacious, but gradually you uh, improve of that. Um, I, think, I think the story for PPMS starts now. Uh, Ocrelizumab is the first medicine to have shown efficacy, but we also know that patients will require more, and we hope to be able to deliver that for them. Uh, but the fact that right now we've finally been able to, let's say, crack this problem, to be able to have a medicine that actually works in PPMS, is, is you know, a tremendous step forward for them, for patients, for society, for physicians. Um, we all hope that with the coming years there will be more improvements, there will be better medicines because people with, with you know, P, uh, uh, PPMS, they really need something they don't have now. Um, MS is a very uh, complex disease, even from a clinical standpoint. Diagnosing uh, MS, following patients, requires an, a deep understanding of how the, the nervous system works, how the symptoms are detected. Um, at this stage, it's really a specialty disease because you have to work in this field for a long time. And also now that you have so many therapies available, you have to be really familiar with them. You have to know how to manage all of, the, all of these therapies, what's the best patient for each one of them. So I think for, let's say, the immediate time and probably for the next few years, this is really going to be a specialty disease. The reason why uh, we all of us work in this is because we want to do what patients need, right? And I'm a physician myself, I'm a neurologist, uh, I treated MS patients for a number of years, I had several hundreds of patients who came to my clinic, 
And, and in those days, I think what we all hoped for was a medicine that could offer them really the opportunity of having optimal disease control, but really not worry about the safety. And for the longest time, we as physicians, myself as a, as a physician, we were stuck in this paradox where we had a lot of medicines, but really not the ideal medicine. So we had to make compromises. And, and so for me personally as well, this is a, a, a really, uh, you know, very inspiring moment because now uh, as a physician, I can think about treating my patients better, offering them again new hope. And for primary progressive, this is, this is just huge. Uh, as a physician and as, a, you know, as patients, as a society, we all should embrace this, uh, this, transform, this transformation of the way we think about MS and the way we treat MS as well.